Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Don from Avalon Advanced Materials. How are you today, Don? Just fine, Tracy. Good to see you again. It's nice to see your volume is picking up. Your share price is starting to move. It appears that the shareholders out there are appreciating the outstanding news that you've been putting out lately. What do you think? Well, I think the uh, news release we put out uh, a year or so ago on the LOI with uh, RockTech Lithium on our uh, plans for collaboration on a battery materials facility has got quite a bit of attention, actually. Of course, there's still lots happening in rare earth world too, and everyone knows of us as a rare earth uh, story as well. But certainly that news release was the catalyst because um, this is now the fifth media interview I've done <laughs> to talk about that news release. Well, Don, obviously this collaboration with Rock Tech Lithium is garnering a lot of interest, but we like the good stuff. Can you tell us how you both met and what brought this deal together? Well, Rock Tech and Avalon have both been longtime aspiring producers of uh, lithium from resources in northwestern Ontario. So we've certainly been aware of what we've been uh, trying to do there. And um, I met with the chairman, Dirk Harbicky at PDAC earlier this year, and we began to have a conversation on how we might be able to work together. And I discovered that we had sort of a shared vision for how this centrally located processing facility would make a lot of sense to collaborate together on getting that established and be able to adapt to different market circumstances in terms of the types of lithium products and be able to serve different um, markets. They have good connections in Europe. Their management is based in Germany and they're developing markets there. So it makes a lot of sense to work with a company that has their own ideas on markets to collaborate with us with the North America market and um, be flexible in terms of product output and be ready to grow the business over time with that facility. So with that in mind, for those of you out there at Investor Intel who may have missed the news, Avalon and RockTech Lithium just recently signed a letter of intent to collaborate on the development of a lithium process facility. So I think in part, Don, uh, this news has inspired interest because the lithium market is heating up. So if you wouldn't mind uh, answering this question with a twofold answer, start by telling us more about what this collaboration deal actually means. And then we'd love to know what you think about the lithium market. Well, as everyone knows, the demand and interest in lithium battery materials is escalating, including here in Canada with the announcements on plans to establish EV and battery manufacturing capacity here in Ontario, and the recognition that we can create those supply chains. So how do we do that? And um, the vision that we've had, and we've got a lot of experience in lithium, as you know, uh, is that... Um, should try to put a, a processing facility in a central location close to transportation infrastructure to give you good access to the, the infrastructure you need to get it started and access to markets for the product, which could be global in their scope. And in Northwestern Ontario, the major transportation hub is Thunder Bay. And that makes a lot of sense as a central location to an area with a large number of known lithium occurrences to become kind of a hub for uh, lithium battery materials production in northern western Ontario. And of course, further to the lithium process facility, you do have a history and a wide uh, array of critical materials, but I want to get your expert opinion because we just did a headline story about how lithium is basically the comeback kid for the battery materials sector. Can you tell us if you agree with that or if you have anything else you would like to add about that? Um, well, it's... It's the interest is building all the time, and it's just accelerating recently with uh, government policy now in Canada and elsewhere starting to push for more rapid adoption of electric vehicle technologies. So that's obviously creating um, new demand, and government is now providing incentives to industry to get these um, 
facilities started and the supply chain started. So opportunities obviously knocking for companies like us to uh, take advantage. And of course, speaking of opportunity knocking, we've seen a lot of PR and a lot of volume happening with Vital Metals. And of course, they picked up your Nechalacha project, but of course, they just picked up a piece of it. Can you give us an update on Nechalacha, please? Yeah, they are trying to move ahead there. Uh, obviously, the uh, pandemic has slowed things down for them, too, but um, we've they're pretty well ready to go, and now it's a matter of being able to get on the ground when the weather conditions are right, working in the far north there. And the idea there all along is for them to take advantage of that relatively small, easy-to-process resource called the T-Zone to get something started there. And once you get the um, production started, get that supply chain started, then perhaps be in a position to scale it up and ultimately bring our resource, the basal zone, that we did all that work on 10 years ago, back into the picture again on a collaborative basis. And of course, we'd like to congratulate you on this collaboration. It's our understanding that Jeff Atkins uh, was head of operations of bringing Linus into production. So you have one of the few you know, senior members out there with real experience getting a project to production in the rare earth sector. Is that correct? Yes, he has that experience and uh, knows the sector and has aspirations for building on that experience, both here and in other locations. And of course, you have additional projects. We'd like to talk to you about your Tantalum project and how that's faring. Yeah, we've had that Tantalum project for uh, 20 years now. And when we first explored it 20 years ago, there was a big bump in interest in uh, Tantalum that allowed us to access capital from a tantalum capacitor manufacturer at the time to explore it and try to get it developed. And uh, we did that program. Fortunately, tantalum prices fell after that and we, we couldn't carry on. But the interesting outcome of it was in exploring these lithium cesium tantalum pegmatite dikes, we found quite a bit of tantalum, but we actually found way more cesium than we found tantalum. And um, we remembered that, and it was a matter of being ready to move when there was new interest in cesium. And we're seeing that now with this global shortage of uh, cesium. Well, I'll tell you, it's been a while since we've done a piece on cesium. So thank you so much for that. And I know you're incredibly busy, Don. Can you share with us anything that we should anticipate as shareholders in the next quarter or two? Well, we did a, a small work program there this fall, basically went in and collected uh, a small bulk sample of the uh, cesium bearing um, ore there. So we could basically design a process to concentrate the uh, cesium mineral polyacite. The way it occurs there is kind of unusual. It's sort of disseminated through the entire pegmatite, and that's um, unprecedented from my experience. So we need to figure out how to efficiently concentrate it. And that's what we're going to do over the winter. And once we get that figured out, we'll go back into the field and start to figure out just how sizable a resource we have. And of course, Don, it's a pleasure to get an update on Avalon Advanced Materials. Thank you so much for joining us today. Stay tuned for more lithium news.